My buddy asked me if we could put modern outfitting into his old school Liquid Logic boat. And although this is a big wheel, which isn't a super popular one, this technique would also work for a skip or a session, which were the precursors to the mix master. So I figured I might make a quick guide just so that if someone else was trying that, now you know how to put that modern badass outfitting into an old school boat. So for starters, I'm gonna do the basics. I know that I have a full kit and I'm going to try to get rid of basically everything that's yellow and the back band, right? So what I'm gonna do is pull out tape measure, measure with height of the seat, take a look at the compatibility of the thigh hooks and just start tearing things apart. One thing I'm focused on is just for my sake, these aluminum brackets that they used to run these through are an absolute nightmare to get in and out because they're pinned through on the single bolt that's holding like three things in place. So I am praying that I can figure out how to get everything back and basically throw those into the scrap pile. With everything out, we're going to start at the beginning with the center track. The original had more thickness than this newer style one, so you could play with leave it in and take it out. I told Eric I was going to go all in, so that's what I'm going to do. In order to make this work so that the pillars are still tight, I shimmed in a piece of foam, glued it down to the track. Now I'm going to spray glue to give it both a little bit of lubrication to slide under that pillar and then glue into that pillar like a sandwich once it's installed. All set. Now let's try and get that seat in there. With the seat installed, you can see my current predicament. I have a gap to fill and my bolt is not long enough. Now with these Liquid Logic seats, the bolt length needs to be pretty close because it can't poke out the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go find a piece of square stock aluminum and cut it to go inside those two rivets and that will bridge the gap without adding a lot of weight but be super strong and I am going to get a bolt that is going to be the correct length. So otherwise we're getting there. One hardware store trip later I have cut two of these one inch tube sections with it centered and in place. I'm now going to mark from the top with a sharpie where the hole is going to punch through. With the hole drilled out, I went up one size. So from sourcing the bolts, I know they're quarter inch diameter by 20 thread count. And I'm going to jump up to a 5 16th bit and then using a flashlight up top, I'm going to align the receiver for that bolt, which is inside the seat, to as centered under the light as I can get, and then drop in my spacer and try to catch that bolt going straight down. With the new seat all bolted in, slide the back band in through the loops up here, and make sure that the Velcro is on the top side to latch in like that. Now I'm gonna install the new thigh hooks through the existing holes. And just to note, as I'm doing this, I'm installing washers with built-in gaskets all the way around. I have no idea why they didn't use these back in the day, but we're gonna stop those leaks right here right now. Quickly coming into the home stretch, the last thing I really need to do is, these are just flopping all over the place because it's waiting for the installation of the Velcro pad that it attaches to. So I'm going to eyeball it out based on that Velcro right there and where it's gonna touch, and then just mark through three holes, drill, rivet, and we're out of here.
Not a bad little project. Turned out beautiful, super happy with it. And the biggest difference is gonna be the seat height is gonna be a little bit lower. Um, so if you didn't like that, you could add foam underneath and extend the little auto clips that are holding that seat pad in and thus bring yourself up. But maybe I'll do that in a different video.